What's going on, Sea Wolves? You're watching USG Hot Takes, the hottest show on campus, literally. And today, I'm joined by our guest, the news editor of the Stony Brook Statesman, Rebecca Liebson. Thanks for coming with us today. Thank you for having me. So, um, how are you with hot foods? Um, I feel like I have like a mid-range tolerance, but okay. I mean, I've seen the show Hot Ones and I'm really nervous. Um, so we'll just see how this goes. We'll take our time with it, we'll take our time. Um, so before we start, let our viewers know what year you are, what your major is, what field you're trying to get into. Um, so I'm a senior journalism major with a political science minor and I'm definitely trying to work in the journalism industry. <laughs> and break right into the media industry, hopefully. Yes. Awesome, that's exciting, that's very exciting. Almost as exciting as this first sauce here. So our first sauce is the hot one sauce. This one is not that bad. Yeah, that one's good. It's a little good. hot, it's kind of tangy. How long have you been a part of the Statesman and um, what's kind of one story that you've written that you're extremely proud of? Um, okay, so I joined the Statesman the first week of my freshman year, actually. Okay. The first story I did was about a medical marijuana dispensary in Riverhead. And that one took me a long time to finish because no one would get back to me. So I'm proud of that one. But probably my favorite story that I've written, um, I worked with a Chinese international student here on campus. Her name is Elena. Uh, she's awesome. But we worked together to um, put out this story about this kind of shadowy industry of Chinese education consulting firms that promise international students that they'll get them into whatever grad school they want um, if they pay like $10,000 and up. Um, so clearly this is not the case. Um, they weren't getting them into these grad schools through uh, legal means. They were forging documents and doing all sorts of terrible things. So um, this is actually the only story of this type that I've seen from a student newspaper or real newspaper. So I was really wow. proud of that one. Yeah. Um, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of time, but I think it turned out really well. There's a little like investigative piece then. Yeah, um, definitely. What kind of like roadblocks did you run into while pursuing that story? Um, well, first off, just finding any information on this because Obviously, it's not advertised that there's this illegal stuff going right, on. Right. Um, and just gaining students' trust, um, having them want to talk to us. Obviously, Elena is part of the international student community, so that really helped having her. Um, and she was like an integral part of the story. Um, but getting them to uh, kind of tell us the full story and be open and honest, that was definitely a challenge. So was there any, um, I guess, backlash from these these people that you kind of uncovered their, their lies? Was there any backlash towards you? Um, so, not really at first, but actually recently, in the past few weeks, one of the comp companies we name in the story who wasn't even the main company that mm. we were looking at was just kind of mentioned as an aside because they're actually being sued by a former Stony Brook student. Oh, wow. They've been nonstop emailing us and calling us, trying to get us to take the story down, saying that we've um, slandered them and all sorts of ridiculous stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we're not taking the story down. There's nothing wrong with it. So they can keep calling, but. Right. <laughs> One bite. You can kind of taste the orange here, actually. Yeah, that's nice. Not that bad. But I think I would actually eat that. Would you cook with it? <laughs> no, I cannot cook. <laughs> <laughs> Being a part of student media, what do you have to say to students who are trying to be a part of it? Like, what are the benefits for them? Um, so, first off, just if you're looking to go into a field where you're going to need writing, which um, is a lot of fields, not just journalism. It definitely helps you to improve your skills um, just through practice. But probably the most important thing to know, and this applies to students from all backgrounds, even if you're from like a STEM background and you might not be inclined to join student media, you really do learn a lot about your campus and you get to meet a lot of interesting people who you otherwise would have no uh, connection or interaction with. So what kind of interesting people have you just came across randomly? Because I know like as a journalism, uh, student and student reporter you like you said you find I guess like hidden gems of the campus like do you remember any that kind of um, left a mark on you? Um, I spoke with some students from the House of Shade 
which is a, a club for black LGBTQ students. And I feel like not a lot of people know about this club on campus. Mm -hmm. um, I followed students in the SBU Cat Club, which is kind of another unknown club. Okay. They um, There's a lot of stray cats on campus, so they help to spay and neuter them and to create traps for them. So they have like a okay. place to stay in the winter, like a nice shelter. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of interesting people and interesting events you'll stumble upon just from doing stories. So this third sauce uh, is called Pain 100%. And um, we're just gonna get right into it, rip off the Band-Aid. This one kind of catches up to you. That doesn't even taste like anything, that just tastes like Spice, heat. Yeah, yeah, dude, it just tastes like heat. Um, so since you've been at Stony Brook, what's what's changed? What's changed? Whether it's on campus, you know, buildings. Um, That's a tough one because I feel like I've more changed than anything. So I'm like, who knows? Like looking back at freshman me, I'm like, yikes. Uh, glad I'm not her anymore. But. Um, I guess I just feel like students, um, when I came here, kind of seemed apathetic almost. Um, and I feel like now there's definitely more um, motivation from students to try and change things. Of course, um, we're not as rebellious as say students at like UC Berkeley or something, but I think Stony Brook is getting there in terms of students speaking out and trying to create the changes that they want to see on campus. Which is very important because you know it's a student democracy. You know we're supposed to have a voice. That's a that's a good good answer to a hard question. So what internships have you had? You've mentioned a, um, that you've been a part of a couple. Um, care to name any? Yeah. So um, this past summer I was a runner for the New York Post, which was amazing. Basically, they just sent me out on the street every day and were like, hey, there was a stabbing in Brooklyn. You need to go to this address and like take pictures and talk to these people. Or um, wow. we need you in court today. Like um, I was in court when, what's his name? The UFC fighter that threw a chair through it. Oh, uh, Conor McGregor? Yeah, I was there no in way. That's um, so court cool. when Conor McGregor was there. Um, I spent time at police headquarters. So that was cool. Um, I also got to intern at NBC, which was Amazing, just yeah. being in 30 Rock is a whole nother world. Right. Um, and then when I graduate, I'm actually gonna be doing a fellowship with the New York Times, which That's I'm awesome. super Congratulations. excited for. <laughs> That's awesome, so um, we're gonna get to the fourth sauce. Are you ready for that? I mean, I guess the third one, I was like, okay, I think I can handle this, but now this one looks a little scary. Let's just, <laughs> let's just get right into it. So this one's called Da Bomb. Cheers. This one really doesn't taste all that good, to be honest. You'll probably want some milk. I feel like I took too big a bite. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go for the milk Cheers. on this <clears throat> What's one thing that you didn't expect uh, coming in as a college student that's happened during your time here that you've had to adjust to? One thing I didn't expect. When you come in from high school, um, we kind of have all these preconceived notions about college that um, you're gonna make all these friends right off the bat and you're gonna be inseparable with people. But I mean, sometimes it takes time to like kind of find your people. And also even once you find your people, that doesn't mean you're automatically never gonna feel lonely or never gonna feel like you don't fit in. Like people in college, I feel like struggle with kind of feelings of isolation and um, feeling sort of like an outsider a lot. Um, and that's just kind of the stage you're going through in your life. You're kind of trying to figure out who you are and like where you belong. So I feel like that was something I definitely struggled with at times in college that I was not expecting in high school because I had a really big social group and um, felt really well adjusted. But I'm glad that I kind of had that experience here because I feel like it's made me um, more well equipped to prepare challenges in my life going forward and it's definitely made me um, a stronger and smarter person. Of course, I think a lot of students, um, including myself, have experienced that um, here or anywhere else, even if they have transferred in. Um, 
it's definitely a relatable thing to kind of feel isolated, whether it's um, on campus and, and you're not used to your setting, because at first it's a, it's a big adjustment, especially if you're not from here. Uh, let's get to our fifth sauce. It's called Mad Dog 357. It's kind of oh intimidating. God. I'm still trying to recover from yeah, the no, last one. Yeah, me too. We'll take another, let's take another drink of milk. We'll take our time with it. Let's clink wings here. Cheers, we're almost through it. So, having the knowledge of what you know now, what advice oh would you God. give uh, freshman year Rebecca? I don't even know how you're talking through this. I'm like, <laughs> about to choke. You take a drink of milk. Oh, it just spilled. <laughs> okay, I guess. <coughs> Freshman year, me, um, I would kind of just tell her, like, stop thinking so short term. Like, things are gonna suck for a little bit. Um, things might be hard in the short term, but like, you kind of gotta like, play the long game. And um, focus on what's coming in the future, focus on all the great opportunities that are coming. I would tell her that one missed assignment or um, one, like, lower grade on a test is not the end of the world and that things will pan out. <laughs> so another build off question off of that, what advice would you give um, an aspiring female reporter that's watching this? Um, I would just say to get as much experience as you can, um, never turn down an opportunity to do a cool story or um, I guess get that other interview and kind of be persistent because a lot of my best stories have come from just badgering people, um, pestering them, not caring about looking annoying, just kind of chasing after whatever quote or whatever lead I was looking for. We made it through all, the, all five of the sauces. We tortured ourselves through the gauntlet. Rebecca, thank you for being here with us today. It was, <laughs> it was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Had a good Honestly, interview. not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It was, it, this is tough. These are really hot, but like, I feel like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to die. Once again, thank you for being here with us today. Um, thank you for watching another episode of USG Hot Takes. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, any of our social media platforms. Um, I'm your host, A.T. Bianco. Once again, thank you for watching. Go see wolves. <laughs> oh my god, my nose is like dripping. I can feel it. You did good. You did great. You did great. Hey, what's up, Sea Wolves? Thanks for watching that last episode. If you want to see more episodes, check us out on our YouTube channel at SBUSG. Thanks for watching.